Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Call the meeting to order. Yeah, Mr. Turner, I think you have the honor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and the opportunity to live in a country where we can come together and discuss the issues of the day as a community. We pray for wisdom. We pray for your guidance. Uh, we pray that we are reminded of Dr. King's words in 63, that we will all judge ourselves by the content of our character. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to President's Day. <laughs> he, he, uh, should he be in this room? Like 500, uh, paper, 500 million of paper dollars. Here. As we enter uh, the approval of the agenda, I'm making a motion that we move item 5D from the agenda. What is D? D, 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 D as in as in dog. Okay. I second that. We have a motion and a second. 5D, by the way, is it's on page three. Correct. It's the approval to accept a late tax exemption application, and we're uh, moving. Have a second to remove that from the docket from the consent. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to call on you last. You're always on at the podium. So <laughs> yeah, we do. Um, okay, with the removal of item 5D, do we have a motion to accept the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Motion second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous again. Okay. Public comments. Um, Carol Davis. Good evening. My name is Carol Davis. Um, I am one of the owners of the farm just north of the pr proposed LCID landfill on Euless Road. Um, on our farm, we grow food crops with a neighborhood farmer. We manage our forests and timberland and fields to provide habitat for birds, wildlife, um, and pollinators. Um, and I have three main concerns about this proposed landfill. First of all, um, we lease our hunting rights on our property to a hunt club led by the North Carolina Wildlife Commissioner's retired assistant chief, Todd Kennedy, who some of you know. Um, roughly about half of the forest where the hunters hunt is on the property line next to the landfill. Um, and the noise and activity from the landfill could affect the hunter's ability to hunt that ground successfully, um, which could lead to less lease income for my family. Second. Um, we have, there already is an LCID landfill two miles away um, up Kimesville Road from the site of this uh, proposed landfill, and it was recently approved to expand its capacity. Uh, in addition, the industrial um, construction and demolition landfill on Foster Store Road was recently, or, or recently applied to increase its intake. Now, I realize they don't take, you know, <coughs> landfill stuff, but, but they could in, in a, um, an incident. So. You know, does Cobalt Town Township really need three landfills in a four-mile radius, which is what we'll have once this landfill is, is approved? 
finally, um, at the October Planning Board, which is the first time I spoke here, um, <laughs> I'm still a little nervous, um, where the landfill was discussed, the other item on the agenda was a proposed solar farm for Eastern Alamance County. Um, there was a long discussion about a bond that the solar company would be required to post in case they would be they were unable to restore the land at the end of the effective life of the solar farm. Um, and this bond protects the landowner leasing his property to the company, but its unintended consequences, it also protects his neighbors from having an eyesore that in, in case the solar company goes out of business and can't clean up that property. So it protects their property values too. There was no discussion of a similar bond for the landfill or really any discussion of who would restore the land after the landfill closes if the owner is unable to do so. Um, the situations are different and I know that. Solar farms and, and landfills are governed by different regulations, but both are businesses that affect the value of the property that they sit on <coughs> and have the potential to affect the properties around them. So it seems the neighbors of the proposed landfill don't enjoy equal protection to those given by this county to the neighbors of the solar farm. If the landfill operator can't monitor and maintain the landfill for the required 10 years after it closes, the value of my property is diminished potentially permanently. So for the three reasons I mentioned, the impact of noise and activity on the hunting club and, and homeowners nearby, the fact that Coble Township already has available landfill capacity and the lack of clarity on who will pay for maintaining, I urge you to deny this request. Thank you. I think she had that time. What do you think, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I worked on it. Very good. Oh, Jerry Waterhill. How you doing? And I appreciate you letting us speak. I just want to uh, voice my concern and alarm about the revaluation that I received and everybody else received in Alamance County. And I'm only going to speak of my particular subdivision, which I live in the Alamance County side of Gibsonville. And the subdivision I live in is called Kingston Place. And the average increase of value in that neighborhood was 71.49%, in which I understand that's not too bad considering other places I, it might be in the 80% like Graham and Mebbin and things like that, but still 71% is, is high and the average increase in value was over $170,000 per, you know, on the average for the whole uh, subdivision. And from a relative percentage standpoint, from 2017, which is around 3% increase, till now to 71%, it's over 2,134% increase from the percentages. It's a lot. And even though I've been told that you want to go with a tax neutral rate, and that some of the numbers that's been thrown to me, which I appreciate, from 65 cents per hundred dollar value down to around 45 cents per hundred dollar value, my calculation says even it must go even further down to about 35 cents. If you consider the average, the county average is 79% increase, the county average. So, and also too, it might want to consider not using this evaluation because it was done from what I understand from Alamance News in October of 2022 from an article, it was done two years early. And that was at the height of the COVID bubble. Now the real estate's coming down. Now it might not come down like it was before, but it's coming down. And I really urge to come up with another scenario because 71 or 79% value increase, that's, <laughs> that's hard to take. But at the same time as I, I, I asked you to, you know, consider changing it or throwing it out and starting over at the at the time that which it was originally done. It was supposed to be done. I think it was supposed to be done in 2025, I believe. But I, I, that's what I asked you to do. And I, I certainly appreciate you allowing me to express my concern. And I know it's hard. I really know it's hard. But also with people on fixed incomes and things like that and people that rent, it's going to affect everybody especially property insurance too so thank you and we thank you mr vines 
Good evening, Commissioner. My name is Henry Vines, 3450 Eisner Drive. Um, John, we'll have a chance to do on the public hearing on the landfill. Is that correct? Right. That's Speak. correct. Yes, I don't need to do that now. Uh, so I, I want just to uh, just reiterate what the, this gentleman just said. Uh, I've done some studying since I was here last time, and uh, at the thirty, at the forty-three and a half percent reduction, uh, seventy-five percent of all the residents in Alamance <coughs> County are going to see an increase in their property tax bill. It's, it's inevitable. Um, and like I said, you know, that's what the proposed rates being is 43 and a half cent. And um, I'm basing this on my own, on my own property. I've had two properties that's going to go up and I got one property that's going to go down. And I learned from Jeremy that the, that the percentage of where your taxes are going to go up and not is at 52%, not the 70%. So anything that's over 52% you're going to see an increase in your property taxes and as I've heard each of you say that um, you know you don't want to put any undue burden of property taxes on taxpayers especially with the economy and inflation and everything that's going in place and that leads me into my second thing uh, I looked on the agenda and I seen where the proposal tonight is about this going to build a 60 plus million dollar courthouse and all three scenarios that were presented in the, in the agenda are a tax increase anywhere from a penny up to two cents well ladies and gentlemen if you don't want to cause undue burden why are we looking at building something that's going to increase taxes if you want to do this we need to work inside the box I know Mr. Lashley has a, several ideas that will work, and uh, I also know that he has several ideas that we can meet the needs of the court system without even building the new uh, courthouse. But 65 million plus looks like to me we need to go somewhere and build a new one instead of working down here on this corner. I think our school was what? Miss Thompson, 65, 68 million. Look how big that complex is. And we gonna do this little box down here on the corner for $65 million? And gonna put the taxpayers in 30 year debt? My grandchildren and their children are gonna have to be paying for it. I hope that y'all are table this. I don't know why we need to do this right now, especially with everything that's going on. And I appreciate the time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Henry. These are the public speakers uh, that had signed up. We ne next have our consent agenda. Uh, and remember that we have to move to 5D from the consent agenda. Do we have a motion as to the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Did we, did we not already? I thought we already approved it. We did. No, we, <coughs> we, we, moved, we approved the agenda. I see. I'm sorry. This is the consent <coughs> agenda. There we have a motion now. We have a second. As to the consent agenda. You need a second? Yes. Sure. I'll second. All right. A motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. It's unanimous. I think there are no nays, correct? Yes, it's unanimous. I like that. I put together my consent agenda with a separate clip or right, one shot. Thank you. <coughs> We are now moving to item 6A. We're looking at your packet, it's page 46 on the agenda. And that is the, the application for the uh, LMS LCID inert debris landfill. Public hearing. That's correct. <coughs> We have a motion, then I'll move that we go into uh, the public hearing as to that matter. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Okay, we are now in 
the LC, LCID landfill uh, public discussion. Anybody on this side as to that matter? Anybody on this side as to that matter? Yes, sir. Mr. Wilson, you'll be next. Thanks, sir. Thank you, commissioners. Oh, uh, I just like to stand up tonight and just say that, you know, this is my neighborhood. Uh, this is where I first moved in here. It was on uh, Euless Road, right up the road from Gordon. Gordon was one of the first people to come up to me and, and uh, welcome me to the community. He was a great help through me all through my years, starting out farming, and um, this is a good family. Uh, I have no doubt that uh, Gordon and his family will run this <coughs> operation in the way it needs to be run. And the thing that uh, I have said before, um, Mr. Pike has went through all the hoops and everything of this hideo. They followed the rules. They were going in, in guidelines and doing everything that needs to be done. Uh, that's one thing I you know on the COVID <coughs> deal that I think it ought to be the same way. If you're going to have to meet it, you ought to be able, you ought to have to meet the rules as be fair to everybody. But I don't have a problem with him doing this landfill. And I think, like I said, I know that they'll operate this in the utmost uh, way. And the other thing, uh, if it's not known, uh, Gordon can see this from his house. It's uh, just over the hill. So I don't think he's going to do anything that's going to uh, put his own family at risk and his grandchildren, all of them live right across the road over there. So. Um, I would encourage you to move forward and uh, let this go on through. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wilson. Right here. Yes, sir. I have to disclose to everybody, uh, Mike and I graduated from Elon together. So, and whether that's a plus or minus for Mike, I'm not sure. <laughs> Jury's still out on that one. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm Mike Wilson. I live in the southern part of Alamance County. And like Mr. Vines, I've known Gordon for a long time. He's a reputable person, a good family man, and I reiterate all the things he said that uh, uh, he's a family man and he would not put something there that would be a detriment to his family. Secondly, I think we need to, to stop and realize the lady before said that there were four other landfills. This is an inert landfill. It's not just a run-of-the-mill landfill. Wood stumps, concrete rock, you know, natural things are the only thing that's going in it. Secondly, <clears throat> with all the development and everything that's going on around the Liberty area and Snow Camp area, there's going to be a need for these landfills because uh, as development takes place from the at Toyota plant, the other plants that's bringing in major industries down here, some of these farms are gonna be gobbled up and there's not gonna be land for a landfill. And with all development, there's gonna definitely be a need for the landfills, for land clearing and those type things. So with that being said, uh, I would uh, hope that you would approve this and uh, let him commence with this this building this landfill thank you thank you sir any other speakers regarding this matter in the public hearing checking he's checking back in the back thank you. how many people are in the back If there are no other speakers, do we have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. A motion second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. We are now out of the public hearing. Thompson, you're on the far left. You want to be the first? Two, 
speak as to this matter? Um, or do you want to speak? Um, I'm just curious, is this, um, I guess I need to ask one of, one of you guys that I met outside. Not the big guy, because he said he was going to intimidate me with a sign. Let <laughs> me go ahead and put that out, Sheriff, my witness. Um, I, is this similar to where the other land field is that Meridian has come in? Is this like the same kind of business? No, okay. absolutely not. Do you mind coming up here and just educating me on this? Are you guys okay with that? Am I, am. I allowed to do that? Okay. Hello, I'm Gordon Pike. My son, Nathan, we are the ones that's going to run the landfill. And no, this will only be stumps, brush, concrete, and rock. Uh, that's all it'll be. And dirt. I mean, if, say if the state's cleaning up alongside the road, they can haul us dirt in for us to keep our landfill covered. Uh, but it will not be like Cobles. Uh, there will be no trash, no garbage, no nothing. Uh, Let me ask you this. The Henshaw yeah. is going out. Right. Mike passed right. away. Right. And this is similar to the one he had. It's, it's e exactly like Mike's. Right. Mike had a two-acre. Ours will be a little larger because when I applied with the state, <clears throat> they said we no longer give out two-acre sites. They said you'll get a larger site so he came and looked at it told me what i could get and that's where we went but the state has approved it he said it's one of the the nicest best sites that i've looked at in 10 years and he said that i see no problem i mean we've got a watershed on that property we've got to be so many feet away from it and <clears throat> we've jumped through all the hoops that the county has asked us to do all we've got to do is build a settlement ponds and the guy from the state said i'll give you permit the day you get those settlement ponds but we've got to do a lot of other stuff that the county is requiring us to do that mike and some of these two acre sites didn't have to do we've got to have a well we've got to have a septic tank we've got to have an office that's handicap accessible and this is all coming from Alamance County <clears throat> making us do this which the state is not requiring it but the county is so thousands and thousands of trees. yep we've had to set out thousands of trees around the property to protect the site from the road and we've got to put a six foot fence all the way around it and I mean, as we've spent a lot of money already, but there's a whole lot more money got to be spent before we can get up and running. Well, do you just have land right now? You're not doing this? No, right? we're not doing this now. Okay. What made you want to do this? Well, I've been in the grading business. I've been running heavy equipment for 53 years. I've been in the grading business for 44 years, and I'm getting older. My son's coming along. He's worked at the Alamance County landfill for 13 years. I mean, he knows all about landfills too. Uh, matter of fact, when Kent Coble opened his landfill, I loaded the first sand rock for over a week there when he got started. Uh, he didn't even have a piece of an equipment. So, you know, it's something that's it's in my blood and I love to do it and there's a need for it. The county is going to need this. I mean, it's, you know. Just one more question. What about traffic? Because well, the, what, is, what does your outfit look like compared to this Meridian? So oh, no, we're going to take it, trash it, from it Mars and it, it. Mine will be minor compared to those. Is it, are you around all housing developments? No, are you in an open no. Field? I'm probably one of the, the most isolated place in Alamance County. And that's one reason that I, I wanted to do it because where we're at, there's, there's no, you know, there's no other houses or there's one house across the road, but nobody lives in it, and it's it's a, probably a mile to the Kinesville Road from my property, and 
it's, it's, you know, it's kind of isolated. Okay, for, just one last question. How long does it take, if it's just constant, for this mm -hmm. to get done? Like, for it to be full? Full. For people to come well, and put their stuff? I mean, what kind of time it, are we it, I would say it depends on the economy. You know, if housing keeps going or if things slow down with interest rates going up, it could slow it down. But the guy from the state, he said, I see a 25-year project. And you don't have to have liners? No. Or anything like that? Because there's no, no ab chemicals ab that's coming no, in? No, 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 okay. no. I wish uh, when Henshaw was running here. Right. Uh, and he passed away this past summer. Right. I've been, I've been closing up Mike's landfill for his wife. And uh, just pristine. It's, you know, right. No contaminants going into that no. type landfill. So di it's totally different than the Alamance County landfill. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And there are no liners required, anything of the sort. Right, right. Uh, and it could be just pristine in 25 years when you close it. Right. So. Um, when you close something like that, do you know it was there? I mean, is this, like, going to be buried, or is this, like, just mountains? We've, we've got to cover it over. It's got to have so many feet of field over it. Okay. And that stuff will decay. They, as companies now, I hadn't heard tell of any of them in Alamance County, but I have in other states, they're going around and digging these landfills out and grinding them and making topsoil and selling it. And uh, so that's something, you know, that that could be down the road. It, uh, it would have to lay there several years to decay to the point where they could grind it up with a grinder, but they, they that is happening in other states. I know Virginia's got some of them that's done that. Let me correct myself. Technically, you should have been speaking during the public hearing portion, that's, and I apologize to this fine. board for doing this out of order, but I think it's helping. So, uh, Mr. Lashley, do you have? Uh, I do have a couple of questions from <clears throat> Pam. She, she got four of them. So I only have one question for you. How many acres do you current? How many acres are you looking to, to currently that the state approved you for? Jeff. So the, the property. Fifty-three point four one. No, thank you, no. Mr. Lashley. Um, Chad Huffine, five hundred five East Davis Street, civil engineer, project engineer. Oh, you're one that's small. Mm -hmm. I am. I'm just here trying to help you guys. <laughs> it's 58 acres in total. The landfill area to the north of the property line and fence line, if you're looking at the exhibit on the big screen, is going to be between 13 and 20 acres. Any other questions, sir? Mr. Turner. One question for staff. The, the planning board uh, approved this request. What was the, was there any opposition? Uh, nobody lady that spoke earlier. Okay. On the planning board itself, Ms. Cotter, was there any opposition? No, the planning board was really comfortable with this project. They didn't really have a whole lot of discussion because they kind of understood this pretty well. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Carter. I don't have any questions. And I do not either. Well, I appreciate it. I'll Thank make you. the motion that we approve this item. Second. Motion second. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Mr. Uh -huh. Carter has made a really super suggestion. Actually, Mr. Uh, Turner made that. Uh, Mr. Turner, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, uh, Mr. Sheriff, we move you down the docket uh, so that we can, we have, I see nine-tenths of the judiciary sitting in the, in the crowd and uh, clerk of court and uh, Sean Boone, the district attorney. Uh, I see superior court and district court here. Uh, so I'm going to suggest, and I think Mr. Turner has suggested, and I think Mr. Carter approves, uh, that we move item uh, 7C and 7D to the next two items. Um, Ms. Manager, do you have an issue with that? No, sir. All right. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Johnson, the, the high sheriff, uh, Hoop is approving. I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> we just need to make sure he gets all the time he needs. 
Mm-hmm. I, t- I told I, t- I told uh, Sheriff Johnson that he had five minutes or, or more. <laughs> you can hang out with him. Okay. <laughs> we need to make a vote. Thank you. John, we need to vote on that. I thought we did. <coughs> Hammond actually had a motion just talked about it. You tell me at the inner list. Making the change. Oh, I don't know, think we need to make a motion on it. Does everybody agree that we can move to 7C and 7D? Is there any opposition? Mm-hmm. We'll just do that. Thank you. Okay. Commissioners, right. do you prefer if I stand at the podium or sit here? Whatever Either is fine. You have a microphone. Either way, I think you're, that's mm-hmm. your option. Okie doke. We ask all speakers, by the way, otherwise, to come to the mic because people out in radio land or TV land or whatever uh, cannot pick up you, what you're saying if you're out in the audience. So we'd ask all other speakers that don't have mics to come to the podium to speak. Okay, yes ma'am. Okay. Commissioners, this item came before you most recently at your retreat. And as you know, your financial model is a dynamic, ever-changing model. (laughs) So you have asked me to bring it back again for some further uh, conversation. So I'm going to go through a couple of options for the board to think about in terms of how the model needs to change in order to accommodate a project as large as the courthouse project, which is your next item for discussion. So I have put together just a summary. You have the full um, Davenport financial affordability model within your packet. So I'm just going to try to hit some of the highlights and give you the opportunity to ask some questions. So in relation to the courthouse project, which is really the impetus for what's bringing this um, before you tonight, we have three cases that we have analyzed for you. Case one is to fund your courthouse project with 100% of a debt financing. The number that's been used for discussion purposes tonight is $67 million for the courthouse project. Case two is a debt financing of 57 million and takes 10 million of your ARP funding. That's the revenue replacement funding. I just wanna be clear that uh, we've talked about this project not being eligible for ARP funding. The piece that is, is that revenue replacement funds. And then case three, it presents an option for you that finances $47 million worth of project takes the, your 10 million ARP and then also makes an appropriation from your county capital reserves of $10 million. And would you tell us how much is in capital reserve at this time? Sure. Let me go to that. <coughs> Sorry, I'm gonna shift over to the actual um, plan document. And it looks like for fiscal year 23, we're talking about 17. Um, 17 million is your current capital reserve fund balance. But that's so you, just for the county. That, has that is just the county funding plan component of this model. Yes. So it's not total capital reserves. That's the portion that you have that you can set aside for this project. That is the total um, capital reserve for the county for fiscal year 23. And repeat that number again. Uh, 17 million. Zero one five six one two. That'll be at the close of this current fiscal year. That does not include a five million dollar appropriation that we discussed at a previous meeting. And you'll recall that there are capital reserve funds both in the ABSS model as well as the <coughs> ACC model. Those would be different amounts than what I'm giving you here for county. Oh, okay. It has the five million. So is that seventeen okay. plus It does five have the five million in this this number that it I does gave. not. It does. It does. Okay. Yes. So we would I sort of thought so when it. When so it would, yeah. be so it would be twelve million. All right. Okay. So we're looking at twelve million outside, but we, there, there's five that's possible. Correct. Okay. If we were to follow the policy that the board had adopted previously. Does the county also have a certain percentage they always like to keep in their reserves? I know we did at the school system. Is there Did you ever want to go below reserves? that percentage? So for the reserve, for the capital reserves, there is no policy. Okay. 
the policy that we have is for the general fund gotcha. uh, fund balance and that is right now 20 percent okay and that will not be impacted by this number that would not that would not that's correct we're at about what 22 percent now that's right 22.7 that's it <laughs> <laughs> All right. So under each of the three cases that we just outlined, the debt financing, the debt with ARP, and then the third one was the debt ARP and the capital reserve, there are three scenarios for which you could choose to fund any one of these cases. The three scenarios include um, scenario A, we're calling, which is <coughs> would require a tax increase. So a project this large, there just simply isn't enough pay-as-you-go funding to support a project this large. So scenario A is implement a tax increase when needed. And that when needed is spelled out in the plan exactly when you would need a tax increase to support that. Scenario B is an upfront tax increase that would begin as early as fiscal year 24. The theory behind that is it lessens the impact, extends it out over time, but you would be implementing that sooner than when the project actually came online. And then scenario C, we're calling a reapportionment of revenue from the ABSS model to the county model, and that would begin as early as fiscal year 24. And I'll go a little bit further into an explanation of what that means and what that looks like. We've also used the term right-sizing the ABSS model, and the reasons that we would want to consider doing that is that when the project, or when the model was initially developed, one penny at the time was about 1.3 million. You know today, one penny is about 1.6, and we know with a reval that the value of the penny is going to grow even more. So you'd want to right-size that penny to reflect your current reality. Uh, another option is that um, we have used very conservative estimates, so we might want to go back and adjust for actual growth of revenues, whether that be your sales tax or your property tax, um, making sure that uh, you have a, a model that is accurately reflecting what that is, <coughs> is truly looking like. So you're truing up the revenues as well as the project needs. And that would be option C. That would be option C. And I also just want to be clear that that would be a fixed annual appropriation from uh, or to the county model. So this would not be like a one-time appropriation. This would be an ongoing fixed appropriation. And the model would be changing from what it was initially uh, designed. So does that mean you're taking money from the school system? It would mean that we'd be taking money from the current model, so where this would show would be in their capital reserve line, and we would be moving that to the county model. So as much work is still remaining on school buildings in sure. this county, some of <coughs> older than I am, which sure. is older than dirt. Sure. Okay. That's all I needed. Well, when we look at the, the capital reserve column, you can see that the way that it's currently designed, which is allocating about 5.64 cents into that model, that that number grows exponentially to a place that is probably more than we would want held in a capital reserve fund. It's when you go down the line, you know, we're talking about going up to around $195 million for them. So the right sizing is, is what we're talking about, is the making sure that we're able to cover all of the needs within this model. I just know how hard I was on the board at that time. We worked to get something that we could really count on so we could plan sure. a big different projects because um, on any good day, something big breaks. Right. And so even with the right sizing, you'll, we'll go through a little bit further, the capital reserve fund for the school never gets lower than I think about $3 million. Okay. But I understand because of the tax revaluation and uh, what's coming up between now and budget, that really is not taking money away from the school system, it's just making it where it is currently or close to. You would be adjusting for all those things we talked about, the value of the penny, the needs of each of the three 
uh, models and ways to support that without hitting your tax <coughs> rate to do so. Thank you. All right, so on our case one, which we talked about being 100% debt financing, no appropriation from capital, no ARP designation, you have your three scenarios. The scenario A, which was implementing the tax increase when it was needed for the project, you would see uh, in fiscal year 28, an increase would be needed of about 1.64 cents. Fiscal year 29, an increase of about 1.34 cents for a total increase of about 2.97 cents. We have put the amounts in there because we don't want to get too hung up on the actual cents because the value of that penny is changing so significantly. So the actual amount that you're, you would acquire or need in scenario A is about $5 million. So scenario B, which was doing an upfront tax increase uh, as soon as fiscal year 24, that would require a 1.72 cents with your current value of a penny to net you about $2.78 <coughs> million. And then scenario C, which is the reapportionment of the uh, models from ABSS to the county, you'd be looking at an appropriation of $2.985 million and the lowest of the, that the reserve would get in this model with all debt financing, so kind of <coughs> your worst case scenario, would be $2.137 million for that capital reserve that I talked about. And so when you look at the spreadsheet that's a piece of the model, it's that very far column on the right, and you can see that it gets, that, um, gets to that uh, level over the next few years and then it'll bounce back up. Okay, so the ABSS funding plan model that we're showing up here now is your scenarios A and B. So that is not touching what's currently designated in the model, which is the 5.64 cents. That was allocated in fiscal year 20 to uh, pay the debt service on the bond related debt. So if you leave that as it currently stands, it would preserve that your capital reserve and the fund balance would stay very strong and uh, the sales tax is projected uh, just held at fiscal year 20 level. So you can see in that model, which doesn't touch that at all, the size of the capital reserves. So currently you're looking at um, about 12.7 for fiscal year 22 and fiscal year 23 we're about 4.7 million and over the next few years that will just continue to grow all right this is that scenario C where you're um, changing the appropriation this is the impact on the ABSS model it shows a fixed annual increase from the ABSS model that would go over to the county model of 2.985 million the impact then I've circled that on your slides where you can see the impact on the capital reserve fund it's still healthy it's um, dipping as low as 2.1 and then will continue to rebound after that and continues to grow all the way down to 126 million Those that cannot read it, the 126,728,684,000 mm -hmm. um, is 2046. Right, this model is many, many it. years. No, I'm sorry about that. All right, so case two is looking at a debt financing plus a 10 million revenue replacement from your ARP. So scenario A, implementing your tax increase when it would be needed would be in fiscal year 29 of 2.19 cents, fiscal year 2030 of 0.12 cents for a total increase of 2.31 cents in scenario A. And that nets you uh, just shy of $4 million. 
scenario B then is looking at an upfront tax increase starting in fiscal year 24. It would require 1.28 cents to net you just over $2 million. And then scenario C <coughs> is the reapportionment of revenue from the ABSS model to the county model beginning in fiscal year 24. The appropriation would be 2.235 and your reserves would stay um, above $3 million. And that's the one that just has the ARP portion in it. I don't think I need to go through the spreadsheets that are in the packet, but happy to do so if you need for me to. Mr. Turner. Yes, sir. Any questions uh, or statements? Are you, are you done, Miss? Do you want me to go through the third case, which yes. is the combination? I def definitely okay. want you to go through the third. Okay, so I'm not quite done. Your third case then is the debt financing at 47 million, your 10 million revenue replacement of ARP funds, and is using a capital reserve appropriation of $10 million. So in that case three, your scenario one to implement the tax when it's needed uh, would require a total increase of 1.99 cents to net you 3.3 million. Scenario B, which is your upfront tax increase beginning next year, would require a 1.26 cent increase to net you $2 million. And then scenario C, the combination of uh, changing the model, the ABSS model, to the county model uh, would require a $2.16 million appropriation, and the reserves would dip the lowest for ABSS in fiscal year 24, where their reserve level would remain at $3 million. So those are the three cases and models that we looked at. Um, given you your various options for taking on a project somewhere in the size of that courthouse project. So we are here to answer questions. I have um, Ted Cole from Davenport present who is available to answer questions as well as myself and our finance director just trying to give you some options to consider how you might fund a project as significant and as impactful to your finances as a courthouse project. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a few questions. First, on the uh, on the size of the of the expense, I understand there are essentially three options. One is a sixty-five million dollar option. One is a sixty-six <laughs> million dollar option, which is the sixty-five million dollar option plus a million to I guess harden the structure to allow a fourth floor at some point is that right yes and then the, the third option would be a 75 million dollar option which would include a fourth floor shell but not finish the fourth floor that's correct okay and then if we for the assumption for the conversation we're having tonight the 67 million dollar total price tag would include either a 65 million dollar price tag plus two million in contingency or a $66 million price tag plus a million in contingency. So for the purposes of our conversation, we're not talking about a, a fourth floor shell. We're talking about a three-story building, maybe with the option of engineering to allow a fourth floor in the future. Is that fair? That is correct. Okay. So for $67 million, um, I want to start with some, I want to go back in time. So when the tax increase was, was put into effect in what, 17? 18. 18. It was this eight cent tax increase. 5.64 cents went to ABSS for their capital reserves, and that amount has remained unchanged throughout this time. That's correct. Um, 1.4 cents to ACC again has remained unchanged, and then 0.96 to the county for the, what was called the penny plan, which is for a number of things. Is that right? And those have numbers have not changed. That is correct. But what has changed is the value of a penny. So in 2018, the value of a penny, like you said, was about 1.3 million. Now it's valued at 1.6 million. So additional $300,000 on 5.64 cents is about $1.7 million, which 
is going into ABS's, ABSS's plan in a, uh, above what it was planned to do. What it was planned to do, am I right, that it was, it was planned to do the debt service on the $150 million ABSS project. So anything it's doing above that is above what it was planned to do. But because the value of a penny is increasing, more money is going to it. Also, um, sales tax continues to increase. That goes to ABSS's plan as well. Yes. Um, and also in the plan, it was, it was assumed that we would pay 5% on the interest that was submitted with the, that, that was accrued on the bonds and we're at what, 2%? A little over two, which all those things allows that pot to continue to grow above what it was designed to do. I think I can make a case that we, 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 before we talk about additional revenue, I think we can look at the revenue that we're getting to make a determination about what we can do. Yes. Um, but I, I, I don't want to decide that tonight without, without having some of these conversations go through the TRC process and the, I would recommend mm -hmm. the TRC uh, process the oversight committee process so that everybody knows ACC ABS and the county what it is that how this might affect their their worlds but if, if I could just talk some actual dollars if we made no changes now to ABSS's 5.64 cent allocation what based on the Davenport plan what is what do we say 10 years out what do what are they projected to have in that capital reserve do we have that number? I have that. Mm -hmm. So if I look at 2033, they would be projected to have $62,519,387 in their capital reserve fund balance with no change. So that assumes we don't buy anything else, we don't do any additional debt service for ABSS, $62 million in 10 years? Yes. If you went with option, if you went with case three scenario C, which is a $20 million down payment from the county, 10 from ARPA, 10 from our existing county reserves, which exist already uh, from the capital reserves. Um, and you assume the, um, a reapportionment of one point, I'm sorry, 2.16 million every year from ABSS's model, you would just subtract 2.1 times 10, right, to determine what decrease you would have to ABSS's? 62 million. So, is it right that you subtract about 21 million? Because I'm taking out 2.1 each year if we do that. It seems right. We actually have run that scenario. So, let me see if I can get you an actual number. It would be case three, scenario C, right? Right. Okay. So, their capital reserve with that uh, 2.16 million allocation over to the county model would put their um, capital reserve fund balance for, would you like it to see it in fiscal year 24? Well, let's just say the, the same 10 year period. The same 10 year, 2033, yes. would put it at 592,332. Is that right? No, that's the that should be right. Turn right here. Oh, I'm sorry. The tan one. The debt is paid. Oh. Okay. I don't have that one. You go ahead. Yep. Oh, that's I'm fine. I'm looking at the wrong page, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. Um, for So in the presentation that we gave to the board, if you look out to fiscal year 2023, go ahead, Heidi. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was looking at the county model. That was the number for the what the county's reserve would look like. So 2033 then would have that at 27,795,549. Okay. Um, Sorry, and if, if we to chose to that. put additional um, county capital reserves in the, into the county's model, that the, the number would, the ABSS capital reserves would, would be higher than that number. Uh, did you say if we were going to put more money into the if, county's capital reserve, right, that would not change, necessarily change theirs, unless you wanted to reduce the appropriation? That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. You could do that. So. Uh, I mean, look, I, I, I think we, we probably, again, ought to put this through TRC and operational review. But, but I, yes. think, I think this exercise shows that there's – the ABSS will still be held. I, I have been a very strong supporter of capital spending for ABSS, and I don't want them to, to get into a hole. I don't think they will. I think there's plenty of money here. Uh, I, also, I also have a question. You know, there, there's been some discussion in the past about the $19 million – uh, bond premium 
potential mm -hmm. that this board is elected not to do at this point. It, if if we went with case three scenario C, is there still an opportunity to finance that debt if we should choose to? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's all I think. Mr. Cole. Oh, well, I've been in this discussion so many times this last week, I, can, I don't think I have any more questions. <laughs> Mr. Lashley. Um, well, I guess the only question, I, I like what Commissioner Turner is doing. I think that's a good way to look at it. If, you, if your tax base is increased, then you should probably get, the taxpayer should get some benefit from that. <laughs> Excuse me. I guess the only question I really have is we just got finished talking about the capital reserve fund, $12 million. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know there's $5 million lingering around that possibly could be used. If you do not use the $5 million for this, where would that money go? Would it go into unrestricted? Would it go into our savings account? Or would it just go into a place where we would use it to, ba uh, to maybe uh, plug some holes with our upcoming budget? So if we're not transferring that $5 million to the capital reserve plan, then that's exactly right. It would stay in our general fund. It's unassigned fund balance, so the board could appropriate that for a future mm -hmm. purpose. It could be used to balance the budget. Okay. Um, let me go to my, give me one second. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess I just want to clarify something, some, some questions that I got about this scenario. Okay. Uh, I guess what I was trying to clear up for something for some people who watch on TV. What you proposed is you gave us three cases. We choose one of the case that we like along with the scenario. Is that correct? We're not looking at all three scenarios, we're just looking at one. Take you the first case, I have to choose one of those three, okay? I, I hope Barbara heard that because <laughs> she asked me that question and I, I thought that was the right I thought that's what you were asking me to do so uh, I don't need a decision tonight right. I'm just simply running scenarios for you to see the capacity within the model absolutely and I'm, I'm like uh, I, I think what uh, Mr. Turner said is, is proper in the sense that you know it's a great idea actually um, sit down with the, the, the powers that be just to run these numbers through uh, ABSS and show mm -hmm. them uh, I can show you if you wish uh, how much money they're going to have at the end of this time. Yes. So we have a TRC meeting tomorrow. We have an OSC meeting on Thursday, and we will walk through and these we'll get some various scenarios. From, from those. Yes, we will. Um, and then as you're moving into the budget process, and we have a better idea of what one penny will will be netting you, we will again revise the model, mm -hmm. and we'll continue to hone it and fine tune it. We're just letting you see what are some options for taking on a project of this magnitude. Well, I'm also Let glad me that you explained the audience. T TRC, thank you. That's the <laughs> technical directors and so forth, <laughs> and the oversight that I uh, will be in charge of on Thursday is basically the ACC, ABSS, and the county. Right. Uh, so we will meet on Thursday and have more input. But I didn't want you guys to get yes. caught up in the letters and numbers. Thank not you. know what we're talking about. I apologize Sorry. for the acronym. It's all yes. good. It's all good. Uh, I'm glad you met, made a comment that you did, uh, that the numbers that you're looking at, you should probably, people watching the radio land and TV land, should probably not pay attention to the sense part yes. of this person. And I'm glad you made that comment, because those numbers will change. Ooh, I guess as yeah. a board, we need to keep an eye on the physical number. Right. And then we will be able to. Right. This is more of a concept. Sure. And less and you have no way to do it other than what right. you're looking at. This now, is a so. snapshot of right now. Well, thank you for your hard work. We appreciate it. Thank you. Ms. Thompson. Um, you talk about sales tax, and I can remember for the last couple of years during COVID, Amazon just had it made because everybody was ordering online. You still had to have people to drive to Amazon to come to your house, truck, prime, all this stuff. You know, it was okay for them to be out while we were all locked up. Um, I seen on the news this morning that credit card, Americans are drowning in credit card debt. 
from de October to December in 2022, there were $61 million billion in charges. And for the year, it was $986 billion. Sooner or later, you're going to get the word denied to pop up because um, you know we just can't keep spending that on our credit cards when we reach a limit and have you ever heard that and I, I know i'm just probably tick some people off but i'm just going to be honest that burning a hole in your pocket i feel like that's what we're doing here we just laid all this uh reval on people created all this shock and awe to go out in our community i know i've gotten phone calls I had a guy said my eighty five thousand dollar trailer on a little piece of grass is now almost two hundred fifty thousand those are good odds they should go to vegas because that that thing didn't do anything different to get that more valuable it's just something that we did mm. i didn't support it i know it's mandated i know we have to do these things but i knew what was going to happen to because no matter what we talk about building or not building or robbing peter to pay paul with the county with the school Joe taxpayer is going to pay for all of this and um, I, I just can't see it I, I just can't I'm not gonna dare touch something to take from the school because if they got a hundred and some million dollars by 2046 they still ain't gonna get all their stuff fixed because 36 7 8 sites so it's not like coming in your living room walking on your carpet it's thousands of feet going in and out and things are breaking and uh, we're short with teachers. That's a thing with everywhere. Everywhere I go, even Blue Ribbon is hiring. I've never seen Blue Ribbon hiring. There's a lot of people hiring and nobody's going to work. And I don't know what they're doing, but I want their secret. And um, I'm just saying, I just think right now, with, with everything that's a pressure on every county citizen, with these taxes, that's such a, that's a tough word. I look at the news every night and I'm watching Ohio and what's happening to them. And my president took $500 billion with him to Ukraine today. I, I, I don't know how you do that, but I'm all about America and taking care of Americans. And, um, and I'll probably have an FBI drone over my house when I get home, but uh, <laughs> sorry. But um, I'm just saying, I, I want new things too. I'm with Mr. Vines. I think we're gonna build something on an island. We're gonna take up a lot of our parking. I look at Rockingham County, they got their land, they're spread out. I look at Harnett County, they got their land, they're spread out. I don't want to do this over again. I want this to be done right the first time so we don't have to add on. We don't have to go back and put up walls or anything like that because every time we pick up a hammer and a nail, it's costing somebody. And I, I, don't, I, I don't want a Barbie dream house that might not work for us but so long because I was in the courthouse all day with, a, with someone advocating, and they never got their case heard because there's just so many folks in there, just the timing of it. And um, we, got, we got serious crime. Y'all know where I come from on this thing, and um, we just have other things we need to look at as well. I want, a, I want a beautiful courthouse. I think we've got one. I want it to match what we need. Um, we got super judges. We got great lawyers. I watch them all in action all the time. I, I put our county beside anybody in this country. But it all comes out of that, you know, Joe Taxpayer pocketbook. And I have to think about that. I'm, I'm Joe Taxpayer. Um, I don't live in a $300,000 house, but all of a sudden it is. And I, I just, there's no way Pam Thompson could live in a $300,000 house unless I won it on the lottery. And that ain't gonna happen either. I try every Wednesday. But um, I'm just saying that that's just my opinion, and I have a right to have an opinion. But when I look at credit card debt, that is pretend money. <coughs> and sooner or later, you got like Guido, the mafia master, is your percentage point 20, 30 percent. It's like Owen oh, the mafia, and people get so drawn into that because they won't, they won't, they won't. And staying at home for two years and calling things in online and ordering them online has spoilt us all because it's just quick and instant. And uh, I. I, I know I don't agree with you guys, but I, I'm sorry. That's just the way I feel. I'm, I'm just $686, $986 billion in debt. And some of these people will never pay it. And it'll get wrote off, and another level of taxpayer have to pay for that. Because we see that with ambulances. How many millions of dollars did we have to write off this year because the folks couldn't afford to pay for the ambulance? Because they can't afford it. They're not going to call and say, I'm just going to have my heart attack. I'm not going to call because I can't afford it. No, please call. We want to save your life. But there's a consequence and an outcome, and we're seeing them. There are really serious outcomes. I'm hearing how the housing market's going to go down. But if the tax rate's way up there, you're going to pay $300,000 tax rate on a $995 house. And that scares me to death because 
People are already watching their groceries. They're already watching everything. What else are they gonna watch? And I'm not gonna support taking one dime from the school system. Uh, they've worked too hard to finally try to get to where they're supposed to be going. And um, that, that's it. Mr. Chairman, can I have one more question? Yes. Um, I, I'd like to, talk, to ask a question of the architect really quickly, if, if he might come up. While he's coming up, I just want to thank uh, Keisha Blue for the bar president for being here today and, uh, and our complement of judges for taking time to be here today, uh, indicating how important this topic is to you guys. Um, and, and while I'm talking about judges, what we haven't talked about tonight, I checked with, with uh, the folks in Raleigh and for district court, uh, the, the folks in at AOC estimate that our four district court judges are doing the work of 4.89 mm -hmm. district court judges, which, which means that Alamance County is number one on the list for a new district court judge, for an additional district court judge. Not sure when that will happen in the budget, but I, I think it's likely to happen by the time you know, a, a courthouse is built. Uh, currently, there's nowhere to put a fifth district court judge. So uh, the county is growing. That's something we've got to keep in mind. Uh, so I, I appreciate um, you all being here uh, tonight, Your Honors. Um, question for the architect. I think when we do this, we're going to have to have a plan on eventually how to expand it. Uh, either we pay $75 million or we have a plan on how it might be expanded in the future. Uh, do you have a sense on whether it's less costly to prepare to go up or to prepare to go out? Well, I can answer that in two ways, probably. Um, doing the, the shell space is probably less expensive now because construction prices are only going to be more in the future. Um, so therefore, if you, if you build, also, the, the, uh, it benefits this, the scale of the project. It's the, a, a shell is only a part of a very large project. When you build, a, build it in the future, it's going to be more expensive per square foot because the scale of the addition will be smaller. Does that make sense to it you? Does. But if you assume that you don't do shell space and only allow for future additions other than that, right. would it be more costly to go up or would it more costly to go out? Uh, it, Again, again, it depends on the, the land situation. Um, I think a one-story building is always less expensive per square foot than a two- or three-story building, and you can just see that by a, a strip shopping center. If a strip shopping center was cheaper to go up, then they'd build two- and three-story sh strip shopping centers, but they keep it low because they have the land to, to do that on. As soon as you go to a multi-story building, you're then talking about vertical circulation, um, stairwells, elevators, and things of that nature that you don't need in a one-story building. So it's, it's marginal costs. It's, it's not twice as expensive or anything like that, but it's, it's marginally more expensive to build two- and three-story buildings versus a one-story building. Would it let, be more let me interrupt yeah. at that point. One. Graham, North Carolina was chosen as the county seat because it is centrally located. Yeah, we're dead center of the county. Uh, two, we have the interstate right here and so forth. And I love Ms. Thompson's idea of going out and buying hundreds of acres and whatever, <coughs> but that's just not sensical in that. This is the county seat. Uh, we don't have hundreds of or even teams of <coughs> acres to go by and start all over. And that just, to me, financially, does not make any sense. We need to keep Graham, North Carolina as a county seat, and we therefore are limited in space. So I think we're chasing rabbits. I think we're missing the point. I think we don't have much choice. We have to go up for a number of reasons, spacing being the primary reason. Now, we do have the one house on the uh, southern part of what we are sitting on now that we already own and we uh, are looking at possibly acquiring an additional house. That could provide possibly expansion and or parking in the future. But I don't think we really want to go out and spend millions and millions of dollars to find a whole new complex and start the county all over. 
I think that's great if you have the open land and it's really dirt cheap. That's not the case in Alamance County, and I apologize. I just want to be sure. If, if the options are to prepare for a fourth story mm -hmm. by hardening your structure or at the same location to prepare to go wider in some number of years, is there a cost benefit to doing one or the other? Wow. <laughs> I don't know that I can answer that question, uh, right, you know, right off the top of my head without doing some analysis of, uh, um, because I, one, I don't know what construction prices are going to do in, in the future, so I, it, it's very difficult to answer that question. Have you ever had a situation where you harden a structure to plan to build up in the future? Um, we have built vertically. Um, as far as I know, our firm has only done it one time, and that was um, the... Keenan Football Center at UNC Chapel Hill where we put on a fifth floor on a four-story building. The, the fourth floor was not designed for, for it initially and I was not directly involved in the project but that was, that was done uh, probably 10, 12 years ago at this point. Uh, we've done, so we've gone vertical one time in, in my, uh, my recollection. <clears throat> Let me have my shot. Uh, one, I have exactly the same numbers as Mr. Turner on the expansion to the 5th District Court Judge. Um, yeah, I'm in and out of court, and Mr. Turner is as well, um, and we desperately need a 5th District Court Judge. And right now, unless we use this possibly as a full courtroom, which is not it doesn't make a lot of sense. We have nowhere to put that fifth judge. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we're required, and statutes mandate that we provide the capital for the court system. We don't have a choice in that matter. Um, have a fifth judge, and we're going to have to uh, provide spacing for that fifth judge. Um, two, I like scenario C because one, it does not require additional tax dollars or increasing the tax rate. Uh, it does take some money out of our general fund, but we have it. That's why it's sitting there, is to use for our capital fund. Uh, and we can save it forever or we can spend it when we have to spend it and not increase the tax rate. Uh, the art money, the 10 million there that we can spend, makes a lot of sense, uh, dollars and cents. Mm -hmm. uh, and then financing the roughly 47 million makes a lot of sense. I agree with Mr. Turner again uh, in that I think we need to plan for the fourth story. Otherwise, we're doing exactly what happened uh, in 19, late 80s, early 90s. We built the J.B. Allen Center and it was pretty much obsolete and full when it opened. And I don't think we want to plan that short range. Um, whether we plan for the ability to add a fourth story or go ahead and complete the fourth story is the question I have for you. What are the, how much extra dollars would it take to build, now I don't mean complete it, have the structure with the fourth story versus building three stories with the ability to add a fourth, fourth story. Right. What's Can I have that slide difference? from last time where we looked at the various options? So he's pulling it up for you to look at right. that. If that's and helpful. we've seen that number, but the folks it's in the audience have not. Right. right. I think yeah, it's, it's slide towards, 10. It's towards the end. There you there go. You go. That, that was <laughs> it. Back. That's that, it. There you go. Thank you. Um, so the addition that we're talking about is approximately 25,000 square feet per floor um, to harden the structure, in other words, put in a concrete slab as the roof structure to, um, to allow for a future fourth floor um, is about a million dollars of which um, about 750 to 800 thousand dollars of which is construction cost, and the other 200 thousand would be what we call soft costs, construction testing, um, those types of, of uh, fees, 
additional permit fees and things of that nature. If you do the shell space um, and actually add the 250 or 25,000 square feet, but don't finish it, but you still have to put in sprinkler system, you have to put in a, a exit lighting and, and a certain amount of lighting. So it's not a, it's not just an empty shell, but it's a, um, but it's ready for use. Uh, would be a, a, from the original, would be a. Ten million dollars, of which seven and a half to eight million would be construction costs, and the other two million would be, again, soft costs. Um, what does that do to the sixty-seven million? Does that go to seventy-seven million, or does it? So the structured roof, the reinforced roof, puts the price tag at sixty-six million. There is some age to these numbers, so I think going with the sixty-seven made a little bit of sense for us because inflation um, so that piece was 66 million and what was presented to you back in November the fourth floor shell finishing out that space took the cost up to 75 million all right I think I asked that question yeah. I know I did so you 9 million separation you. is that correct yeah 9 million yes yeah. 66 million uh, for the structured roof 75 million for the finished shell yeah, it was ten million to finish because I asked you and you told me. So roughly, we're likely looking at sixty-six to seventy-five million if we choose to elect the fourth floor or possibility of Correct. the fourth floor. Correct. And if we choose Plan C, we don't have to increase taxes. Correct. We can use the funds that have been set aside already with the looking at the uh, school set aside capital right redistributing between the two models to make that work without a tax increase right, guys I started practicing in 1973 October of 73 we were obsolete and this addition to this annex building was completed in 1974 we were way way behind the year I started practicing law. And that was soon, it's already 49 years ago. Uh, I think we're making a massive mistake if we do that same thing. We can be penny wise and cost ourselves a lot of dollars and a lot of future. This county's going to have to have the expansion. Uh, Sheriff Johnson's indicated that, the judiciary is here, the clerk's office is here, and they're all, I suspect, supporting the expansion because we have nowhere currently to put people that are already in place. Um, so I'm suggesting that we look at and encouraging Schedule C and then we later refine whether we want the structured fourth floor or the ability to add the fourth floor at a future date. That would be my suggestion. It would be a structured or, the, or a finished. Correct. Shell. Yeah. Mr. Tur uh, Carter's correct. Finished shell versus non finished shell, the ability to add the fourth floor. <coughs> but in either event, to have the ability to add the fourth floor. Mm -hmm. Floor's open. I would just suggest that would be a good topic for a TRC and operational review. That the $75 million price tag seems a bit high to me uh, and our ability to do everything that we're trying to do um, with, with keeping ABSS. <coughs> sound and uh, and not raising taxes but I also encourage that process to deter to tweak this I mean we don't we could have option D section yeah. D uh, th th this we can tweak we can tweak around this and work out some numbers uh, you know perhaps the, the additional five million um, you're gonna need the five million if you go to 75 oh yeah mm. I mean, I, I got no. I got. Yeah. I did scenarios with it and right. with it out. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't put that five million in at the seventy-five level, you're gonna. You're, not only you're not gonna get. You're, you're gonna have to right size, and right. then you're gonna have to raise taxes. Well, I'm, I'm not. And sort I think of I got it about a. Uh, in my head, I'm looking at maybe a penny, <laughs> at, at one point six. But I digress. Well, I'm not sold on the seventy-five, but I do. I do think that that we. Uh, there's some tweaking here that we can do for it. Okay. 
County manager. Yes. Do you need further input from us at this point? For this item, the, are we on the courthouse item, <laughs> right? Not the model. Correct. On the courthouse item, we would be asking for direction to move forward to enter into formal design for the building with CRA Associates. We would do that after we have the uh, meetings coming up with uh, the oh, we'll see capital yeah. committee and uh, you could. capital review. Um, I think we're ready to move forward with the design work. Remember, that's a year-long process, um, and so there's still the opportunity to fine-tune the design with either of the options moving alongside and in concert with the financial model to make sure that you can afford that design alternative to. Uh, we, we have designed the model at this point for a $67 million project. And I feel comfortable moving forward with that, giving you those three scenarios for funding it. May I ask permission to have Judge Allen uh, uh, approach the bench or uh, <laughs> the podium? We uh, don't hear that often. If the legislature appoint, uh, approves the fifth district court judge, uh, which is likely, so I'm being told, and I've talked to our House and Senator, uh, likely to happen, where are you going to put this fifth person? What are you going to do with them? We'll, find, we'll, find, we'll have to find there. a place exactly. because, as you stated, in 1993 when the J.B. Allen building was built, we were outdated the day we moved in, and we've had to readjust with clerks, uh, cubbies, DA's office has taken over the library, part of the grand jury room, uh, and so we we would probably have to have, a, a in the interim, a, a satellite office at the annex, which I've taken several of the commissioners and even uh, Mr. Boney to see the uh, broom closet that we used as a uh, uh, judge's chambers at one time for quite a while. But we will, we'll, we'll have to figure out something. But there's no space in the J.B. Allen Courthouse for another judge. That's the point of what other questions of Judge Allen? What I saw over there was a surprise, I have to admit. Uh, this, the, the locations, the space, the convenience, the security issues, I think more than anything else, the security issues bothered me a lot. Um, I mean, we don't need judges in the same hallway with um, defendants in criminal cases. We don't need uh, clerk of courts people. We don't need uh, DA people in the same hallways with defendants. Um, I mean, I know, we all know that we that our detention officers and our deputies are going to try and make sure nothing happens, but we've all seen situations where what you didn't think was going to happen, happened, so. Mr. Vice Chair, I will say that the most dangerous court that all of the judges any of the judges handle was over here in this annex building when we're doing domestic work. Right. More so than criminal because domestic is so highly emotional. I have handled a lot of domestic, unfortunately, uh, in my time, a lot of criminal, and I absolutely, the fights and, and misconduct that I, that I personally witnessed the most would be in domestic court. <coughs> Other questions of Judge Allen? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Short, does that give you what you need or do you need for us to be more specific? Are we comfortable moving forward with the design work and moving this project forward at this point or do you want to do something different 
I don't think we need to take a vote, but I think we individually need to say yes or no. That is a vote. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I don't think we need a vote. Well, I, I, I would prefer, I would prefer to wait a couple of weeks, allow this TRC operational review process to work. Um, I mean, that process could discuss the 75 million, but my concern about the 75 million is that it would require either a tax increase or uh, a, a reapportionment of ABSS revenue that, to, to the, the degree that I'm not comfortable with at this time. So I, I think it should go through that process, and I don't think waiting a couple of weeks or maybe even uh, to the, maybe even a month is going to significantly alter the trajectory of this project. I agree. I, I Projection. Agree, Craig, I I can I say that? Can. <laughs> Wait through the process. Take <laughs> oh, the tires on it and figure out where, Trajectory. It, where yeah. we're going. Okay, our Projecting. next meeting is March 6th. <coughs> so that would be at the earliest March 6th before we would make any uh, absolute decisions. Are you comfortable with that? I am on your schedule. Okay. This is that a project that takes we many years. Waiting to March 6th. At your yes. command. So we're not going to vote or anything. <coughs> Everybody's going to assume that all five of us are for this. No. No, I don't no. think we're assuming nope. anything. But okay. I haven't told you how time. I feel about it. Well, I, before we move forward, I just wanted to last couple days ago. This is really quick because I sent y'all all of this. I had um, emailed Tony, can't pronounce his last name, Steele, um, about our stats for all of our overdoses. Um, three weeks ago, I went to meet one of my clients to do the rest of her application to go to drug treatment uh, residential, and I pulled up and there were two Burlington PD officers, there was EMS, and there was fire. And I knocked on the front door and this guy come running around, I'm not going to tell you the street. I go, Ugh. So anyway, and, um, I meet her on the gurney because I knocked on the door and this guy said, are you here for so and so? I said, yes. He said, she just OD'd. So I meet her on the gurney, I go to the emergency room with her for three hours, I get her in residential treatment services, and two days later she walks out. She was like one breath away from hell. And this is the lifestyle. This is just the nightmare of drug addiction. And um, 39 overdoses last year, 238 suspected overdoses, and 135 of those are Narcan, and 68 of those were twice Narcan. So, I know we need bigger buildings and stuff like that, but we need bigger programming to really take care of these issues as much as possible. You cannot make somebody get well and stop doing these things, but if you don't have all the programming they need in the support systems, they don't ever have a chance. And I think we've had enough people to die, and I just want, we will just focus on all things that are part of the criminal system. Craig made a good comment. He said, we're growing. Yeah, our crime is growing. So if we're going to build this great big building, we better add on to that sheriff right there because he's going to need more security in it and he's going to need more deputies and everything else that he's always short. Everything is suffering from crime. And um, we all pay for it, no matter how you look at it. We all, some people pay for it with their lives. Some people pay it with believers in their children. Some people pay with going to prison. And some people pay with just staying in this ugliness. And um, y'all know how I feel about addiction. It's just, it's, it's killing this country. I just see it all the time. And, um, and we're no different. We're rotten here too. As long as we got drugs, we got stuff. And uh, I just want us to look at the great big picture and not think a building's gonna fix it. You know, the diversion center's gonna be wonderful, but it's going to divert people. If we don't have somewhere to divert them, we just got a part of it. And we gotta look at the great big picture. And that, that's all. One of the things you and I have looked at is the di divergent court. Recovery court. Recovery court. It's yeah. so yeah. crucial. I went there a year ago and we, we nothing. We don't even have a place to put that. Yeah. So. so here's a room. Just, uh, Judge Champion, if you'll come forward, you raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> No, you, you raised my hand. I probably shouldn't have. I'm Rick Champion. I'm one of the district court judges, a new one. I want to say I can't be said I'm the youngest. I'm just one of the newest. Um, Ms. Thompson is right. We have a horrible problem with addiction. We have addicts and dealers that we have to deal with. But I've said this before in other public forums. We all want to be safe. We want all our citizens to be safe. So what do we do? 
as a legislative body, generally, we fund the police, we fund the sheriff's department. That gives us more enforcement protection. But if you look at a funnel, the law enforcement part of it is the big top of the funnel. So if we keep expanding the top of the funnel so we've got more officers to protect us, making more arrests, and we keep the bottom of the funnel the same size, we can't squeeze everybody through the funnel. And that's, that's why we need, we don't need a Taj Mahal. Nobody needs a Taj Mahal. I joke about one, one of those TV things that come up and I can play things on. That's, that's a joke, but I mean, we just need space to hold court. Um, and that's why I'm asking that y'all think about it. I, I think the fourth floor shell makes more sense for long term. Um, I know when we did our little analysis and I wasn't on that committee as much as some of the other judges, it looked, it was a shock to everybody how much it was gonna cost. But y'all asked us to look 20 and 30 and 40 years down the road to try to get that capital structure in place for the future. That's why it was such a shock. But Mr. Vines, we, we I know, we, we, it's, it's hard to say do we spend money on this versus that. But if we're gonna enforce the law and have officers protecting our citizens, they have a right to come to court in a place to have their case heard. Otherwise, they, it, it gets heard not next month, not six months, but three and four years down the road, just because we have to have the space. We don't have the space mm -hmm. to put it. That's all that. And just uh, champion, you and I have practiced law for a long time, both of us have. Um, what folks typically don't understand it's not just criminal cases. No. You have all just a whole our, our range of civil cases and which have expanded because our definition of marriage has gone up. Okay. And, and believe it or not, same couple marriage they get broke up too. So we had to do, we got to divide that those marriages up. So they, well, we keep expanding all the things that that comes to the courthouse for resolution when they can't decide. Um, the state settlements. So what I watched over in the. Uh, historic courthouse where they're doing estate settlements with one couple backed up to another couple discussing their personal issues. I, I don't think anybody in here wants to have to deal with that. Um, we, we signed up for it. We just need a place to hold court <laughs> to get it done. Yeah. That's all. I know. We it's just, thank it's you. just almost impossible to imagine it costs $65 million. Well, you'll recall that it was brought back to you in April of last year at $99 million. So we are moving in, in a direction to right-size it. I do want to uh, give our chief Superior Court judge, Judge Lambeth, do you want to say anything? I think they've said it beautifully. I'm, I'm just observing that the district court is so squeezed uh, that I, I think they've spelled it out very well. And Judge Overby, you've been on our committee for the court, would you like to say anything? No, I think everybody has said everything that I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very I do acknowledge that we have our clerk of court and district attorney here. Uh, I'm sure you guys don't want any more space, do you? <laughs> <laughs> we started uh, when the courthouse was built, that courthouse, the DA's staff was 14 people. Right now we have 14 DAs, 25 staff. And we moved in, as Judge Allen said, we moved into the law library. We are, we don't have any place to put anybody in. All right. Crime is a booming business. Thank you, Mr. Paisley. I'll just say on behalf of the clerk's office, we just want to serve our citizens. And as, as Mr. Carter pointed out, we, we don't feel like we have adequate space to do that in some of our most precious conversations, um, that people cannot help when their family members die are not protected in private conversations. And that is an area of concern for me, um, as well as the space of my growing staff. We're up to over 50 now with our temporary staff um, given to us to help with um, COVID backlog. And so we expect that number to continue to grow, expansion of e-courts. We've got a lot of things happening in the court system. We appreciate your consideration. I do acknowledge we have uh, Judge Brown here as well. And, uh, and our other Superior Court judge is not even sitting, saying that. <laughs> Do either of you have anything you want to add? We just thank you for your consideration. Thank you all. Thank you. And we have the Chamber of Commerce. We thank you for being here. County Manager, do you have what you need at this point? Am I to understand that you'd like to bring this back at your next meeting 
for some further discussion after the models have been shared with the TRC and OSC committees. And that would be Wednesday and Thursday of this week with those two committees. Tuesday and Thursday, um, yes, sir. And then uh, March the 6th would be our next county commissioner's meeting. Okay. Everybody good with that? Yeah. All right. Does that take care of C and D? Yep. Yes, sir. I think it does. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a 10 minute break because, one, I suspect the whole judgeship wants to leave. <laughs> Y'all are welcome to stay or welcome to uh, not stay. You're all going to leave. Mr. Turner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just have one comment about the last, uh, <laughs> last item, and I talked about this a couple months ago. I think it would be real, and I'd like to say it while the judicial folks are here, I think it would be helpful in determining how much space is needed now and how much space is in the future to take, say, the last month of, of court that we've scheduled in Alamance County, schedule that as if it's in the, the, the new building as it's designed now, uh, and determine what goes where, which, which would help us determine, do we have the space that's needed for court now, and if so, in what space in that courtroom. And then, the second, the second thing to, to take, assume that you have a fifth district court judge, and how many more courtrooms would you need with a fifth district court judge, and to plan that in that building as it's planned, with, with three floors, and see how that works. Do we, do we need more space now? Do we need more space in the future? If so, how much? I think that exercise would help us determine what's needed. Is there anybody in particular that... I'm not going to direct the uh, Superior Court judge to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> It probably wouldn't, wouldn't work out too this well. This might be the only well time you could. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm asking. I just think it would be, I think it'd be helpful for us to have that uh, as we make that. Would the judges like to leave now so we talk? No, I'm not. <laughs> We're here to hear the sheriff. Okay. Nice. Okay. Item 7A. See, now somebody wanted to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Are you ready? I'll tell you what, I, I had no intention for it to fit in with what has gone on a lot about the courthouses, but I would uh, like to go over in the last year what's gone on here in the county. The average person does not know, and uh, it's uh, really compelling when you look at the statistics that's come out. You will understand why there is an addition needed to the courthouse. Start off with, Alamance County Sheriff's Office, one calls for service, self-initiated self calls of service, 84,788. Central Communication initiated calls services, 21,710. And of course, I would go over all the rest of them if you want me to. Total calls for services, 106,957. Uh, uh, and we only have, right now, about 10 deputies on a shift. Uh, miles driven, 2,103,516. Warrant served, 2,218. Traffic stops, 4,757. Vehicle chases, 43. And we just had one last night. They stole a Lamborghini, two uh, Rolls Royce, and a Dodge Charger out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Had the system on it where they could track it. Raleigh refused apparently to chase the cars. They come into Orange County. Orange County started chasing. Run them into Alamance County, uh, and uh, the, the chase. When the chase is ended, we didn't get any of the people, but we got the two Lamborghinis and the, I mean the two Rolls Royce and Lamborghini, but. Uh, I had a video tonight, but our lawyer advised me not to show it. I have never seen I thought a rocket took off. Our cars were running wide open. It looked like a rocket took off from our cars. Those cars were running over 200 miles an hour, and you could see it. Wow. But we were able to recover those cars. And the guy was very happy in Raleigh, but, you know, basically custody, Raleigh PD out, because they didn't take that. We have got to come together as law enforcement and try to stop this mess, and the court system's going to have to help us, and if they have a courthouse, they may be able to do that. <laughs> uh, vehicle chase, like I say, if, uh, 43, that's in this just year, first year. Uh, assistance outside agents, 986. 
you will be surprised the number of agents. We have been down to Caswell County when they had the deputy uh, shot down there three times. We have been all over this state. Why? And I'm very proud of our people because we have one of the best SRT teams that get. And to, uh, off of drug money, we were able to buy the Bearcat, which if people don't want to come out and they're in there shooting, if you have to, you can drive it through the house if you want to. <laughs> and when that thing pulls up a lot of times, and it stops officers from being shot. And that's very important. Fingerprints at the front desk. We were fingerprinting people from Charlotte, North Carolina. All these other sheriffs refused to fingerprint people. When the medical people wanted to be fingerprinted, they, so we had them coming from Charlotte and everywhere for us to fingerprint them so they could go in and work with patients in the hospital mm -hmm. to get their license. They have to be fingerprinted. Patrol division. Arrest, 323, 9-11, hang-up calls, 1,214, business checks, 35,645, extra patrol, 18,994, domestic, 664, disturbances, 707, missing persons, 126, overdoses, 117, and that's not counting the deaths, that's overdoses that we brought people back with Narcan. Uh, Speak to an officer, 5,017. And like I say, I'm going real hurry, so y'all won't get mad. 9-11 hang-up calls. Do what? 9-11 hang-up calls. Yeah, people get in a fight in the house, yeah. and they'll go to call 911, and the husband or wife grab that phone and slam it down. Well, a lot of people say, well, why do y'all even go? Because we liable to show up there and be a dead body laying in the floor. We are going to go if we have a 9-11 hang-up call. Some of it is kids messing with the telephone, mm -hmm. too. And uh, <coughs> dispatch could tell you about that. Uh, residential alarms 932, business alarms 507, violation of court order 82. Mental health subjects uh, we were involved with 440, and that's nothing yet. Diversion center should help that. Did I go past one? Yeah. All right, animal crow. Let me tell you something. I have more heartaches over an animal than I will a triple homicide. Yep. I don't understand. I love animals, but. Uh, we're, we're running wide open with the animal calls for service, 4,568, warning citations, 78, civil citations issued, 40, dangerous dog declarations, 13, bite reports, 107. Here is where a lot of people don't think about the courthouse being used. Civil summons and sir, summons served, 869. Uh, return 332, magistrate summons served, 3,063, magistrate summons returned, 265. Show calls order served 842. Show calls orders returned 487. Notice of rights served 306. Notice of rights returned 128. <coughs> then we're going to get in some real stuff in a minute. Notice of foreclosures 268. <coughs> Rid of possession real property served 787. Rid of possession real property return 150. Summons and termination of parental rights 16. And buddy, when you're having to deal with that, it's a dangerous situation yeah. and taking a child. Order uh, file inventory served, 277. Order file inventory return, 95. Okay, special response team. This is where we're getting in, where we're going to need more courts. How much county sheriff's office missions, 13. Mutual aid missions, 9. Two out of county. We have a special response team that, is, uh, like I say, we've been to Guilford County to help them. We've been to Caswell County. We've been to Rockingham County. We've been to Person County during the, the protest. And... Uh, like I say, we have a great train team, and we have equipment a lot of these other agencies don't. And uh, Castle County, we were just over there about two weeks ago uh, on a situation. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I was so proud of my people. When we got there, the Highway Patrol was there, some of Person County was there, and Castle County was there, and nobody, nobody had was know what the other person was doing. They didn't even have a, uh, you know, circle the problem areas just like when the officer was shot. And we got in there, our people took charge, and I was very proud of them. Not because I'm sure, it's because they care and they train. Okay, school resource unit. Thank goodness to you, the commissioners, and the school system that we have a school resource officer in every single school that's operating in the county. And we have asked, and I understand the school system is willing to pay 70000 for the one at the new school. We'll just have to pay for uniforms and stuff like that for the new school. And look at here. Student contacts, 8,310. Par parental contacts, 2,220. Incident reports, 284. Teen court referrals, 112. Now, just a couple weeks ago, we had uh, uh, where a student put on a TikTok shooting his classmates. And when it, it left, two students got kicked out there, 
and then it went to Western. I don't know what happened with those students, but this is very serious stuff. He had that, what? Huh? He had what? He had, and they, uh, they could put, like he's standing there shooting all of his classmates. He can film the class, then go up on TikTok and put some, a person there with a gun shooting these people. Well, you can bet the parents became very, very upset. But yeah, no. I will say this. The school system... Dane Butler is the best thing's happened in this county in a long time. That's what I was going to add. Dr. Yes, sir. Butler's we have wonderful working relationships with him and uh, the board. Scenes process, crime scene unit 305. Gun traces. This is where when we see his gun, we trace it. Who bought it and where, whose hands it was in the last time. 151. Gun process, 148. That was collected 3,571 pieces. Okay, uh, this is our special victims unit, and buddy, are we we getting up overwhelmed in a lot of cases there. Case C, 1,319, domestic violent cases, 630. These are some of the most serious cases an officer has to handle answering calls is dangerous for him. Domestic violence field contacts, 410, where no assaults occurred. Domestic violent protection orders issued, 553. Total arrest, 189. Felony charges, 196. Sex offender compliance checks, 816. You will be surprised how many sex offenders are operating in this particular county. Sex offender address changes, 224. Can There's a lot of work that goes into this. Can you not go on the internet and figure out your community? Pretty much, yeah. Can, can you tell Yeah, there's a site that, that you can go look at that. Right. At. Yeah. Yeah. That's my point. You'll, you'll, you'll be surprised how many uh, we, ha we have to arrest that don't give the right address or moves without notifying. Okay, FBI task force. We have a guy assigned to FBI task force. He's been to Mexico three times mm. on investigations. This is where a lot of our drugs are coming from, and uh, but rest 39 indictments, 30 methamphetamines that he was involved in seizing, 100, 106,916 grams or 236 pounds, cocaine, 21,890 grams or 48.2 pounds, marijuana, 19,000 grams or 41.8 pounds, fentanyl, 1,218 grams or 2.68 pounds. U.S. currency seized $334,518. Firearm seized 27. And this is where a lot of your firearms, uh, you know, they, they get traded back and forth over the borders and uh, stolen here in the county. Alamance County has the U.S. Marshal Task Force. We have an individual sheriff's office assigned to the U.S. Marshal Task Force, which goes after the fugitives. Uh, that we're looking for in, our, in Alamance County. Been 39 arrests, warrant service 82. Federal case adoption, this is the ATF task force. We have a person assigned to the ATF that works with the gun cases and all that and tries to get them into federal court. Federal case adoption seven, NIBIN entries, this is where they'll trace uh, guns and bullet, you know, match bullets from different shootings, different stuff. Illegal firearm seizures, 31. I want y'all to look at the number of firearms that we're seizing. Fel, uh, federal fully prosecuted cases, four indictments, 19. Total federal prison time since 142 months. We get a whole lot more time in federal court than we do in state court. And that's not our judges. That's the way the, the laws are written here. But with that, we get to repeat offenders over and over. Uh, and that's why you need, if, if we would put everybody away that needed to be put away, we probably wouldn't need to be building another courthouse. But our judges don't have that ability. They're structured sentencing and all kinds of different things. Street Crimes Unit. Total arrest 301. Mr. Bunny's drug charges 370. Federal drug charges 308. Weapons seized 49. Uh, U.S. currency seized $54,826. Surveillance hours 5,225. Cocaine seized 5,308.97 grams. Marijuana seized 8,042.4 grams. Heroin and fentanyl seized 182.67 grams. And that's almost enough uh, fentanyl to kill a half Alamance County, if you were to look at it. Methamphetamine seized 407.86 gra uh, grams. And the reason I'm showing you this, too, this is telling you why our court system is so full, and the problem is right now is so full. A lot of these cases are just sent through, and, and you, uh, a doggone DA 
cannot properly prepare with the number of cases and a judge in a courtroom certainly uh, needs to hear every aspect of that case to be able to make the right decision on the sentencing. Uh, strike team. This was developed. Uh, our Matt Martin, who was U.S. Attorney, come to me a few years back, and you commissioners gave us four people for the strike team. Orange County, us, and Durham County worked together. We just finished operation in Durham County, and that sheriff down there was tickled to death. I wish I'd have brought a copy of the letter he sent. Arrest 54, assist other agencies. That would be Durham, uh, Orange, 142. Cocaine seized, 222.5 grams. Methamphetamine, 151.6 grams. Marijuana, 870.2 grams. U.S. currency, $17,123. Notice again, firearms, 33 seized. These are illegal firearms, felons, drug dealers, etc. Community contacts, 886. Alamance Narcotic Enforcement Team. This is where a lot of the local agencies have the. Uh, yes, sir. And all these firearms are the predominantly pistols? Are they rifles? Pistols? But most of them are pistols. I'd say 90% of them are pistols. Uh, and about 90% of them are stolen uh, from somewhere. So if you have guns in your car, keep your car locked. Uh, I can't believe people don't do that anymore. I know. Uh, cocaine, 64,000 grams or 141.6 pounds. Methamphetamine, 4,500 grams or 9.92 pounds. Heroin, 2,000 grams or 4.4 pounds. Fentanyl, 6,000 grams or 13.2 pounds. That will, would kill this entire county probably that much. Marijuana, 51.072 grams or 114 pounds. Look at that. Firearms, 23 more firearms seized. U.S. currency, $1,221,283 seized. That has helped us because we, if we work these cases out, with, and we do, uh, we get a percentage of the money that's taken. That's why we were able to, to buy the Bearcat. It didn't cost taxpayers a dime. And a lot of our rifles and stuff we buy out of this money. Keep having to come to y'all. How much are we owed right budget now time. to come back to the Do county? what, sir? Do we know about how much we're owed right now to come back to the county? Well, I know there was 63000 that come in today, and I and we have uh, to to keep to keep from having to put stu uh, uh, stuff in the budget. Uh, Heidi and uh, Susan knows we use some of that money to keep our budget as close to null and void as we could. That about some of your cars, doesn't it? Do I? That we bought some cars, cars. yeah. Mm -hmm. We bought some cars. Sure have. Uh, criminal investigative unit cases, 844. Recovered property, $344,101. Total arrest, 140. You will be surprised at the number of investigations that not only do we get involved in here in the county, but the city of Burlington, people live in Burlington, they call, well, I ain't getting satisfaction. Not knocking Burlington, please don't put that out there. But we can't get no satisfaction. I said, ma'am, that's in the city of Burlington. Sir, that's in the city of Burlington. But by golly, I pay county taxes. Yes, ma'am, we'll be there. So <laughs> we'll call Burlington, let them know we're going to help work the case. Sheriff, if it makes you feel any better, we as commissioners get the same thing about the city problems. Oh, so I can <laughs> tell them call y'all then, huh? <laughs> they already do. <laughs> yeah, they are. All right. Of those 140 uh, <laughs> arrests. Do what, sir? Of the 140 arrests, how many involve drugs? Are you, which, you talking, which, talking about ain't the, the criminal investigation unit. Oh, that, that's fraud that is committed. Now, now, how many were involving drugs as a side? Oh, I'm, uh, most I, I of couldn't them? give it, but I, no, I wouldn't say most all of them, but a big majority of them do. Drug like paper. You go up here on Maple Avenue corridor, uh, you know, they're, they're still in the line they can get to supply their habit. Right. And, you know, Something's got to be done on that end somewhere along the line, too. I'll just tell you, I, I see it, and I'm sick of it. And a lot of times, they have mental health conditions that cause them to, to the drug world, and when they get there, it's all over with. You will be surprised the amount of human trafficking going on in Alamance County right now. We'd point out we that we are here. second to Mecklenburg County for mm -hmm. human trafficking. Would point out that Maple Avenue is not Alamance County jurisdiction. No, it is not. But we have gone in there and worked it. Uh, you know, you get a call from uh, a person who's got a business of our raising cane, and 
they hit you. Like I said, I pay county tax. What do you mean you can't do nothing? <laughs> we try to do it. Uh, carry uh, concealed permits, 1,266. Concealed carry <coughs> permit renewals, 1,429. Pistol purchase permit, 1,907. Uh, there's a bill in Raleigh right now to try to, to take this away from the sheriff and just leave it up to the uh, uh, gun dealers. And I have a problem with that. I tell you what, my people check the mental health record. Nix does not check the mental health, the mental health record. And I am a NRA member, and I love firearms. But there's a right way and a wrong way to sell them doggone things. And I know a sheriff is going to double check. At least I do, and my people do. And if they don't, They'll get in trouble when ATF comes in and goes through their files. Just for the record, I am absolutely in agreement with you. It should go through the sheriff's department. I mean, it's work on us. A lot of sheriffs are, uh, are saying, oh, yeah, y'all can have it. We don't want it. We don't want it. Well, let me tell you something. And my son is an ATF agent. And their business is gun dealers that old buddy here needs one, but I ain't going to make him go get a permit. And then that gun sold to somebody else and winds up in a felon's hand, killing somebody. That's why I think the sheriffs, you know, that's just my opinion. I can't speak for the other 99 sheriffs in the state, but I can tell you a lot of them feel like I do. And it's worked for us. I mean, we're, I got three people working that stuff. It's kind of like the opioid crisis started from a prescription pad. It just didn't happen. Right. Over, over prescribing drugs. Yep. Painkillers. Believe me. Uh, mental health unit. Involuntary commitments, 299. Mental health provider assessments, 339. Uh, suicide watch. The people have been on suicide watch, 152. Behavior health medication, 411. And you're going to get into it now. Detention center investigator. Cases received, 179. Inside the detention vision, we have a guy that uh, handles all the investigation. Total arrest, 82. Inside, then they violate the law on something else and wind up uh, getting arrested. Warrant served, 362. Sale search hours, 215. We have to do those sale searches because people, uh, what we call suitcase drugs in, if y'all know what I mean. Uh, and uh, when they get inside, yeah, you quit laughing, Mr. Boney. Uh, and then we also uh, surveil the uh, Paytail Home Wave, uh, uh, 720. Uh, Times on that, and you'll be surprised what we find out is going to happen or what's coming in that jail or not coming in that jail. I would, uh, if you haven't had a tour of the detention center, I would recommend it. I know, I know Pam and I have. Uh, Pam, I would love there. for the, if you have the commissioner to have not to come and go through that jail. Come and there, you will the, see. Uh, the, uh, and then we have a, a Citizens Academy. Citizens Academy I'd like to see everyone. I you did it. Through it. I did it. I did it. And was it worth it? was such a wannabe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, and it's not, but what, six, I think it's six nights from 6 to 9.30, and we feed you some food. And then a big graduation dinner. But you, you will see sure. what the sheriff's office does, and, and, and not because I'm sure, but you will be surprised. You will really be have no idea what goes on. And I'm what telling patrol you. Does. And patrol junior, does it all. Yeah. Patrol is something. <coughs> and the junior police academy. What a. Oh, what yes. Wonderful. Yeah, that is. You'd be surprised. We got, I'm not going to call the kid's name. It went through the junior police academy several years ago, coming to deputy right oh. now in Alamance mm -hmm. County. Otherwise, I think he'd probably be in prison. So. Have anyway. you got your x-ray machine installed yet? Yes, sir. It's installed, but waiting for license to come from Raleigh for our people that are to be certified in running the machine. What kind of time frame is? I'm hoping to be, they may already be in there, but I didn't have a chance to check today. Okay, if I come over there with my suitcase <laughs> and I go through this machine. You won't go through that machine with that suitcase. Okay, but if you see my suitcase, what's going to happen to me? I'm going to take it away from you and search it. You're you going to take my suitcase. That's not what you're saying, Sheriff. David, That's is not that what you're saying. <laughs> I'm just oh, saying, no, no, I know what you're talking. do you well, arrest I, me because yeah. I've got a suitcase? If got, yeah. Up there, hey, we can't touch you. We can't search you back there. Okay. Um, this this is so that. going down a hill. Okay. Are you going to arrest me because I have something I'm bringing in with me. You're already arrested. No, I know I'm arrested, but do I get another charge because right. I'm trying yes, to smoke? If you, if, you got, if you got come in with drugs or even stuff not allowed in that jail, okay. you're going to be charged. 
Okay. You gonna make sure. Do you have a person who unsuitcases <laughs> stuff like this? <laughs> yes. I'm just asking because it's okay. got to go somewhere. Let me say that you go through that machine yeah. and we show you got something up your booty. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's just getting worse. Uh, well, I, you know, oh, well, I'm just telling I you. Need, I need to know this because I want everybody does. What? We get a search warrant. Oh. We take you over to the hospital and it is removed. Now, if you have eaten it, we will sit with you beside of the uh, bus, you know, until you pass it. May I encourage us to move on? <laughs> I appreciate that because I'm, I'm blushing. <laughs> but anyway, you're going to find it. That's the key. We, right. if, it, if we can, we are. Okay, good. And we say we have no right to search a person's private part okay. if, you know, yeah. unless we get a search warrant and have probable cause. Please don't put that person in your budget <laughs> for next year, <laughs> searcher. <laughs> I hear you. Okay. Ten dollar cases received one seventy nine total arrest eighty two. That's all right after already in there. Warrant served three hundred and sixty two. We'll we'll arrest a person, bring them in, we check on the computer. They may be wanted in Orange County, Durham County, or, uh, or even in this county. Uh we got uh pay tail home way self uh, says seven hundred and twenty hours, that's where they're talking on the the uh, cameras and stuff to their people home uh, home wave and we're able to monitor it. Gang intelligence hours, you will be surprised how many gang members are brought into that jail without our knowledge and wind up a fight in there and we find out they're opposing gang members or whatever. Uh, assault investigation on detention staff. We have had seven serious assaults on detention staff. And I think I've told y'all before, when, you, when you're operating short staff, or you having to force people to come back in after working a 12-hour shift or work another 12-hour shift, they're tired and they're apt to be assaulted. And you can bet those inmates know every single one of them, how long they've been there, and if they're back in there. They do. They've got 24 hours, seven days a week to uh, outsmart you. Uh, assault investigation on 10 staff, like I say, seven. Okay, Detention Center painted fire. <laughs> this um, Graham Fire Department asked us to help paint the fire hydrants in City of Graham. There's, I think, 780 in City of Graham. We painted, this is with inmates, we painted 390, and they come back and said, hey, we want to change the color. I said, good. Have a good time doing it. <laughs> and we come on back. Because our inmates, we got to pick trash up on the road. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, it was ridiculous. Why change it? They, they had the colors and had them painted. But we try to help agencies when we can. Trash collected off the roadside, 6,720 pounds, and that don't even make a drop in the bucket. Uh, matter of fact, I was riding down the road, and there's a mattress, box frames, and a bed frame, and uh, two or three tire side. And I was in my truck. I threw it over in my truck, drove it down to the, to the landfill. Sheriff, what are you doing? I said, shut up. I'm picking up trash. And I went on through <laughs> So, but they're they're good to work with. Uh, mental health patients transport 352. If you've never uh, transported a mental health patient in crisis, you ain't. Hey, it's tough. I can tell you that. Miles driven for the transportation and medical mental health patients 45,060 inmates transported. Uh, 800 uh, inmates transported 126. 45,060 miles that we've driven just transporting mental health patients. A mile driven for transportation of state and county inmates, 109,711. Miles driven for transportation of U.S. Marshal inmates, 16,969. Miles driven for transportation of ICE detainees, 103,014 miles. Where does that go? What's that destination for ICE? It's out of state, isn't it? Em Emigrate, that's uh, ICE. But wait, take, is it Georgia? That, Didn't it used to be Georgia? That you were transported yeah, back Georgia, to Georgia? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Immigration and Customs. Yeah. Before whatever we hold their inmates and we also have a transportation contract right. with them and well i'll get that later <laughs> here we go inmates seen by medical staff sick call 3974 inmates blood sugar check 3357 inmates blood pressure check 7316 tb screens and ppd test 4926 inmate admitted to the hospital 14 and when we admit one to the hospital we have to have 24-hour surveillance setting with the inmate at the hospital. 
and that is time consuming. Inmate sent to the emergency room, 53. X rays completed in house, 856. Medical screenings completed, 8,103. COVID test conducted, 4,677. And just learned today at our staff meeting, we, we have some breakouts in the jail right now, and we're having to deal with that. Detention Center continued. Inmates released, 6,945. Inmates booked, 6,897. ICE detainees booked, 1,157. Federal inmates booked, that's Marshall, 136. Inmates seen by on site behavioral health professionals, 339. Assaults on officers. This is investigations that we had to do in the general. Not those seven, but other things happened. Ten uh, visits conducted via home wave, 201,576. I'm not going, oh, yeah, I'm going to go over this, and then I'm going to be through. FBI Uniform Crime, and I'm the reason I'm doing this is to show uh, you what the standards are as far as the law enforcement, sheriff's office, et cetera, which we're way under not counting the staff, and I'm not in here asking for more people, okay? I just want to let you know what the... The FBI Uniform Crime Report UCR program finds that nationwide the rate of sworn officers for county agencies is 12.8 per thousand inhabitants. The rate of full-time law enforcement employees, civilian and sworn detention officers per thousand is 2.8. When the population of cities and towns in Alamance County uh, served by police department population is just the county, it's not counting the city, cities. We have uh, right at 65,335, and that's a low number because you're looking at probably 180,000 in here by now. Uh, I don't know what latest this was, a 2020 census that I took. we took this from. Conclusions based on the UCR findings, the ACS sworn position increases from 153 to 182. That's how many, by federal standards, we should have on patrol. Now, I'm not here asking for that. I'm asking to be able to keep what I got, <laughs> you know. Uh, the, of the current 153 sworn positions, we have eight vacancies. That's on the sworn. We're looking for eight people for patrol and different, different things right now. Based on the UCR findings, including the total county population, and they say this was taken for 2020, 171,000. We over way over 180,000 right now, but we used 171,000 figure 2020. <coughs> The Alamance County Sheriff's Office Detention Center civilian and sworn position increases from 153 to 478. Technically, with all, we're, what we're running over, we should have around 478 people in detention. We don't have that, but I don't think we could ever hire that many at this point. I'm just pointing out what the federal government is saying. Of the current 153 positions, we have 43 vacancies in detention. We have 153 positions there and 48 of them are vacant right now. We are making strides. Uh, Y'all have helped tremendously, uh, but I'm gonna tell you this, we need more help. That's all I can tell you. And if we don't get it, then it's gonna you know, put me in, in a position to have to stop dealing with the federal government on holding these people, which is where you wanna say it or not, it helped offsets the cost to the taxpayers. You know, so that's something to consider. All right, Alamance County, Sure, so these are some of the, just some of the seizures. We didn't do a whole lot. Uh, I could have put a ton up there. I also had some uh, videos, but after speaking with our county attorney, uh, I chose not to show them. Uh, so that's basically these just some of the seizures, guns, and stuff, and it's over. Now, let me tell you, like I say, last night we had chases with Lambert and the Lamborghinis and stuff. Just a couple weeks ago, right down here at County 4, and this, this burns me up. They broke in, stole keys, got a Mustang GT350, Mustang Shelby GT500, Ford F450 truck, and a Camaro. Gone. Broke in this past Saturday night, busted windows out and everything, but they had moved the keys so they couldn't find no keys to, to fit the cars to steal. What I'm trying to, to, to say here, our courts, it's going to be, it's already overcrowded. Already overcrowded. And with the crime coming in here, and I'm telling you, the interstate has caused us some problems. It's caused us gang problems. But our juvenile system has to. When they raise the age of juvenile, I knew that was the wrong thing to do. And we're having to deal with those now. In Alamance County, I think we're very lucky in a lot of ways, but it's coming. 
It's coming. Uh, you every day morning I turn on TV at four o'clock, five thirty in the morning. I'm watching uh, uh, Winston Salem. They've had shooting just this past weekend. Like I say, we had those chases, but Hall River had a home invasion, one killed and one shot, and in serious condition. And I guarantee you, a lot of these are coming in here from the outside. But we do have a bunch of mean young people here that are in gangs. The cartel is present here. And we do need a courthouse, and I wanted to, to give you these statistics so you understand where I'm saying. I get ill at this sometimes. Y'all and my people don't even like to be around me because, hey, you got 5 o'clock, get somebody in jail on this. And so far, they've been pretty good about doing that. But you as commissioners, I have a responsibility of protecting the citizens and their property. But you have a responsibility to give us what we need. And I'm not, I'm not hounding you for anything right now, but I'm telling you, please think about that when we're looking. The courthouse, if we, you know, we got people over there in jail, been there four years. Four years waiting trial. Now I can tell you, if I'd been there four years waiting trial and I wasn't guilty, oh, they'd have to beat the daylights out of me because I'd fight everybody to come around me. Just think, they've lost their house, they've lost their family, they've lost their job. Hopefully, with a new courthouse, and I, they didn't ask me to say this, but hopefully, with a new courthouse, we can take care of some of the problems we have. Give you another example. I had a video I was going to show you. I can tell them about it, Rick. Uh, guy, uh, of course, I chased, I, when I was a young SBA agent, I was chasing his family, so I'm not going to call the name. <laughs> but some of y'all up here know it, and it's the family history. Cut his ankle bracelet off. We had to run him down, Rick put another ankle bracelet back on him. These are things that, that we need to get these people tried and out of here as quick as we can. Our jail is staying pretty full. And with that comes a lot of money being spent feeding these people. If we maybe can get another courthouse added, maybe we can stop some of that. Y'all have any questions? I'd like to point out your bar chart and that was, was. They, they wouldn't let me do that, see. No. They told me to cut out some of my presentation. Believe me, I wanted to. Well, I, I called him and told him he had five minutes. <laughs> I knew it wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, obviously, 2021, you had more resignations and terminations. Yes, sir. And then you, in 2022, you turned it around. We've turned it around, and we're hoping. I understand. I heard through the grapevine. I don't know if this is true or not. But uh, the commissioners were thinking about maybe freezing those uh, open positions or taking them away. I'm asking you not to take them away. If you freeze, freeze, uh, more, you know, to help offset the budget. I don't have a problem with that. But if we can hire, leave me about 15 so we can get those hired. And then if we have more, let's unfreeze them as we go. Because if not, uh, it's going to get a lot worse in our detention center. And I am responsible to see those men and women go home to their families without having their head beat in. And if I lose an officer, uh, that's going to be the worst things ever happened, I think, in my life. I don't want to do that. And I don't think y'all want us to do that. Not a chance. Honorable Sheriff, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank y'all very much. For all your hard work. Thank you. Mr. Atkins. And remember, all those people have got to go to court. Let me try. <laughs> okay, we're on item 7B. That's the uh, advertisement of delinquent taxes for 2022. That's right. Your right. honors, thank you. And I will try to keep it brief. I know it's getting late. Uh, General Statute 105-369A requires the tax collector to report to the governing body uh, the total amount of unpaid taxes that uh, are in the current fiscal year that are a lien against real property. Uh, upon receiving this report, the governing body order, orders the tax collector uh, to publish these tax liens to advertise them at least once in a newspaper having a general circulation. Now, the good thing about this is that the cost of this advertisement is borne by the person's whose taxes are not being paid. Uh, it's added as a fee. Uh, we estimate that $5 per account uh, per parcel advertised would be sufficient to cover the cost of advertisement. 
And of course, folks that are under bankruptcy will not be advertised. Uh, bankruptcy law would not allow that. Now, as of January 31st, 2023, the total amount of liens against real property for current year taxes <coughs> was $5,495,000. $492.86. As of close of business today, that was down to $3,776,335.06. Uh, so um, what I'm asking for today is a motion by the board um, to approve the tax lien advertisement of unpaid real property parcels for tax year 2022 at a cost of $5 per parcel. That will allow me to add that fee and proceed with advertisement. I so move. Second. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'm, I am recommending to the board uh, that we advertise uh, March 16th on or about uh, that allows time that anybody that pays by the end of February, you know, we have to wait for postmarks to come in, um, that they will have a chance to be posted and not get <coughs> advertised. Um, one difference uh, this year I would like to mention to the board, um, I would like to suggest uh, we've always split the advertisement between the Times News and Alamance News. I would like to suggest combining into um, one publication. I think that it would be more cost effective uh, and if the board uh, so wills, I would like to go forward with uh, getting quotes from any of the qualified vendors and uh, wh whoever's lowest, put them all in one paper. I think that would be the best use of county resources. May I amend my motion mm -hmm. to include the publication date that you've just mentioned Absolutely. and allow you to make the choice as to the publication? Thank I'll you. amend my second the same one. I think we've already voted though I think I don't know we proper to amend I think maybe a new motion would work all right mm -hmm. then I'll make a new motion and the county attorney's indicating you're correct I'll second that mm -hmm. all in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed <coughs> unanimous right. thank you thank you so much mm -hmm. okay item uh, 7e yeah <coughs> excuse me this is mostly a housekeeping item. I have a proposed uh, policy before the board tonight for your input and discussion. Uh, this would create some objective criteria by which we could make funding decisions for replacement of vehicles in our county operating budgets. Um, we have laid out some um, criteria for you to consider that would include the vehicle's age, the mileage, the frequency, as well as the type of use, whether it's patrol <coughs> pursuit, whether it's an ambulance or a utility vehicle. And so we have a mileage chart for your consideration. Uh, we would be looking at the vehicle fleet on an annual basis, and then this would help give us some priority um, when we're trying to make budgetary decisions in terms of replacing the vehicles. Will this increase, decrease costs, or just make it more efficient? Well, you currently don't have a policy at all, uh, so we're hoping that this would lend some um, objective um, analysis to it, but we would not be able to afford to implement this with the full fleet that you have right now. So this would be some guiding principles over time. Um, I think when we did a quick assessment, your vehicle costs, if we were to run them all through this criteria would be around seven million dollars <laughs> so we would not be asking to do that but we would be wanting to try to give ourselves some guidance uh, in terms of when vehicles need to be replaced and also consider then uh, when we retire a patrol car for example could we uh, re uh, distribute that or repurpose that to a county department for another purpose um, given the mileage criteria that we're laying out in there. So normal car usage could go up to 150,000 miles before we would look at replacing it, whereas a, a sheriff's vehicle would not last quite that long given the wear and tear on. And for the benefit of the commissioners too, I mentioned to you earlier this week that I had, uh, or last week, late last week, had had a conversation with a former commissioner up in 
uh, Caswell County, and he said that they had moved to a fleet leasing program with Enterprise, yeah. and that it had been very beneficial and it enabled them to add some significant dollars to their fund balance. So uh, I, I would I would encourage us to take a look at that alternative to always having to purchase the vehicle. <laughs> I understand that that's been looked at here. I've also looked at that other places. It does take a significant amount of upfront capital to get that program moving forward, but if the board would like to take a look at that, we'd be happy to do that. Have you had anyone to contact you about um, switching over to propane? I had a gentleman to contact no, me sure. that um, said that there's several counties that have turned their county automobiles over to propane mm -hmm. and uh, how much cheaper it was and cleaner. Because we all know how the world feels about gas right now. Yeah. Crazy. Sheriff, did you have a comment you wanted to make on yeah, that? Yeah, I was just saying the, the uh, No Con Surf Association has contracts with uh, different uh, automobile agencies in the state, and the county can purchase off their contract like mm -hmm. we do. For instance, if you we do. were to buy, uh, what is our cost on, a, say, a, a Dodge Charger, uh, six cylinder? Uh, like 36 or so. Thirty-six thousand dollars is a lot cheaper than fifty-two, fifty-three. Yeah. You buy off a lot. And county manager, I think you have. We to do that. Out. Yes, we do that. Um, when we try to purchase, we use co state contract rates for that as well. Brian Baker wouldn't be driving a car that would go that fast. <laughs> Brian Baker does not drive a car. No, I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm out. You ain't got the light flashing. I'm out. All right. Let's get that one. Yes, please. Uh, Madam County Manager, quick question. Do, do we know what the average maximum mileage is for the cars under these categories currently? I can't give you that off the top of my head, but I'd be happy to do a little more analysis on that. We have approximately 460 vehicles right now. That's a lot. I'm sorry, how many? 460. But, but we, it's a they whole lot fewer been, to know that are, that are retiring. So We, we, we haven't we, been rotating them out like we need to. So when we're purchasing more vehicles, we continue to add to the fleet. And this policy would help us rotate them out and sell them on gut deals, as mentioned I, in the policy. Don't have a problem with the policy. I, I do wonder if the mileage is a little light. I mean, 90,000 miles for a year. Yes, the name? sheriff and I have had a conversation. Uh, he feels more comfortable with 100,000 miles on there so we could easily make that adjustment okay I'd, I'd like to see the numbers that we're looking at now just to be able to make a comparison just as an okay. aside i have too, that in the spreadsheet and okay. i'll be happy to share that just as an aside too back a long time ago I'll, I'll go back to when you were just practicing law and i was studying in east carolina selling cars i was reading an automotive weekly one week uh, one weekend sitting in the dealership and looked at the um looked at an article on police cars new york city police department was rolling their cars out at about at that time they were mostly crown vicks they were rolled them out about as i recall this was a long time ago but i think they were at around 200 250 thousand miles and they were being bought in most cases by taxi cab companies mm -hmm. and when they were rolling them off they had 500 thousand miles on them so Sherry, do you have those but now they weren't mileage? In New York City, I don't think you have a lot of cars driving 125 miles an hour either, so. Chasing a Lamborghini. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I hope you got that on film. I got to see that. <laughs> that was a Porsche. <laughs> That's amazing. Can I recommend that we <laughs> remove this or postpone this decision to March 6th Absolutely. and gather more information? Yep. Does the board agree? Sure. Okay. We'll see that on March 6. Moving to item number eight, county manager. I have no additional report. Thank I you. like that report. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> county commissioner comments. Mr. Turner, you want to have anything? I'm Mr. Fine, Mr. Carter? I'm fine. I'm good. I'm fine as well. I've said all I need to say. Thank you. I like those reports. <laughs> County Attorney. A few things for you guys tonight. Um, with the board's consent, I'm going to remove the closed session related to litigation update. Um, we do have two other closed sessions, and I'll read those now. For Student North Carolina General Statute 143 318.11A4, 
I'd ask the board move into closed session to discuss matters relating to location or expansion of industries or other businesses in the area served by the public body, including agreement on a tentative list for economic development incentives that may be offered by the public body in negotiations and also under General Statute 143 318.11 E5. I ask the board move into closed session in order to instruct public body staff from negotiating agents concerning the position to be taken by or on behalf of public body in negotiating the potential purchase of the real property owned by Alamance Rescue, and that's parcel numbers 160550 and 160554 for potential use by Alamance County EMS. No anticipated action after the closed session. Do we have a motion? So move. Second. A motion second. <clears throat> Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. We're now in closed session. Okay. We close the um, closed session while in closed session. Uh, we're reopening our general meeting. And the only thing I know of, guys, we took no action. Uh, so we need a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgov.com tvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.